So I'm making this ultimate AI research course from zero to AI researcher. And if you go here on learn, I'm going to leave the URL below. Today, I did some research on batch size versus sequence length for large language models. I will explain what both of these are if you don't know, but uh, quickly, my experiment showed that larger batch size trains faster, but larger sequence length learns more if you train both for a long time. So the reason I came up with this experiment is I wanted to fill out memory of my GPU completely. So should I increase batch size or should I increase sequence length? Because I want to make full use of my memory. So if you don't know, sequence length is how many words or tokens you can fit in your conversation, in your context window. So here, this is fewer and this is larger sequence length. So the intuition is that if sequence length is larger, more tokens, then LLM will learn to handle more complex information, more complex dependencies, more complex logic of the language. So LLM will become smarter and uh, scaling on sequence length is still going. So currently these best LLMs can get like 1 million, 2 million token sequence length, but that's going to 10 million, 100 million in the next couple of years. So usually if you are training big LLM, you want to start with 4,000 token sequence length, do the pre-training and then later extend that to 10,000, 100,000 million. Uh, that's how I understand the current, it's the com most common way of training. If you are training smaller LLMs, you want to do maybe 5, 12 or 1024. Because uh, you simply don't have enough time and compute to train such big uh, se uh, sequence length because bigger sequence length, as I said, will train slower. But in the end, it will learn more. It will plateau later, after. So this small sequence length will plateau and stop learning earlier. Even though in the beginning it will be smarter, faster. Simply because you can train a lot of these more in parallel together. And here, uh, this big sequence length, it takes a lot of memory. So you cannot train so many of them in parallel together at the same time. So that was the idea behind my experiment. So let's say I have some uh, language model, LLM. Uh, and let's say I have a lot of like free space or some free space on my GPU. So should I increase the batch size, train more sequences in parallel, or should I increase the sequence length? And this is basically the conclusion that I figured out here. I just told you. So small LLMs uh, this much, big LLMs this much. And by the way, in my school community, I wrote a detailed step-by-step -step article for you to learn how I coded this experiment step-by-step -step and how uh, you can learn to code it. And there are many more lessons on machine learning. It's just $9 per month and get seven day free trial. So cancel if you don't like it. Anyways, I want to explain batches. So see here, we have this sequence. So this is independent. One sequence, second sequence, third sequence, fourth. So we train on multiple of them at the same time. We process them at the same time. So we learn in parallel. We don't need to like train one by one. Now, uh, what I'm going to say now requires a bit of understanding of neural networks and gradients. So, uh, all of these come up with their gradients. Gradients are averaged and then weights are updated. What I just said, if you didn't understand that, just go to this course. This is free course uh, on my website. And uh, you can just uh, check, find here lessons you are interested in. Keep in mind it's still in development. But basically... Uh, AI will process all of these sequences, it will learn something from every, and then it will average out what it learned, and then it will update, change itself, update itself, so now it becomes smarter. That's the process of having large batch of independent samples, and then processing all of them, and then averaging uh, what the AI learned, and then updating itself. So if you have smaller sequences, you can fit more examples, so you will, it will learn faster. But as I said, smaller sequences plateau earlier because long sequences allow AI to just learn more complex text and more information from the text. That's what I also explained here. So validation loss doesn't uh, tell the full story. You see here, well, my batch size, my sequence length was 256. 4,000 and 1,000 in the balanced. So I also had balanced one. If I can zoom this in. 
and the batch size was big here, so big batch size, small sequence length, and then small batch size, just six, and big sequence length and balanced. So as I said, uh, the large batch size is gonna converge fastest, the blue line is fastest. The green line is slowest because it's large sequence length, and here we cannot see, so this is why validation loss is not the best measurement tool, because here the logic says that long, long sequence length would be smarter, but since validation loss is so low, uh, this is not shown here, it's not easy to see. So that's why I want to start training uh, LLMs so we can evaluate them on Hella Swag and other benchmarks, because that's where we can also uh, actually see the, their intelligence. So that's in the future of this channel, we're going to start training real LLMs. I think it will take $5 to train an LLM so it can like show results on Hella Swag more than the random results. So it, it shows it knows something. Guys, do any of you know if this validation loss is too low? I remember from these big labs, labs they have validation loss at maybe one and a half, one or two, but mine is so close to zero. It's not zero, but it's so close. So does anybody know like if there is any issues here? And you can find our experiment at Blueberry LLM uh, GitHub page. I'm gonna leave it below here in experiments. You can actually do your own experiments. So experiment three and four are done by other people. So this guy is uh, trying to figure out better attention mechanism, while this guy, uh, I have credits in there, he's trying to figure out how to use mixed precision uh, better. And uh, we learned from these experiments and I'm gonna credit you here. I put here like who did experiment, I put like social media and credits and research questions, answers and everything. I want to start training bigger LLMs on bigger GPUs and here I'm using Novita AI. So you see we have Blackwell 200, the latest GPU, $3.20, but check out this trick. If I change to spot billing, it goes off by 50%. So uh, I'm going to actually leave my affiliate link below and you can get 50% off here if you choose spot billing. And if you use my affiliate, they will help me, give me more compute so I can make these videos, I can uh, train more LLMs and make tutorials. But anyways, my code will work on any GPU provider you want. So uh, I'm going to try to train on Blackwell 200. I was training this on uh, this one, this one was very cheap, 18 cents per hour. But I'm going to go uh, a bit higher in the next tutorials. So you can check out my course. This is for free on OpenSuperIntelligenceLab.com. Just click this learn. And all of this knowledge to become AI researcher will be free forever for everybody. My uh, school community is there to accelerate, help you give more tasks, more exercises. But uh, I'm going to keep the core uh, fully for free forever. So you can learn all of this. Also join this course where we do AI research together. My future idea is to train in FP4 using the Transformers library by NVIDIA. So I think it should be easy to do. I'm going to try to use Blackwell, but one, that's probably one of my future videos. But until then, that's going to be it for this video and see you next time.